Hello again YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're going to be inside. Um, it's minus 26 right now outside with a wind chill of minus 34. So we're going to do some inside projects. Um, if you watch my channel, you'll notice that I have a video on my mealworms and uh, it's starting to get out of hand. So I believe that was a couple months ago I made that video where there's tiny, tiny little mealworms happening. And uh, I thought it would take forever for this to become bigger mealworms and have the whole system going. So um, this has uh, been a big surprise to me and it's been a massive success. So I'll show you what's going on right now and why I have to change what I'm doing. Okay, so here you can see this is what I had my mealworms in. And it's just a plastic, clear plastic box. And if you see my old video, this is the exact setup I had. So you can see I'm starting to get more pupae. So this is the second round of pupae. So things are starting to grow exponentially. And you can see those were the baby mealworms that you saw in the last video. And now they look like they're perfect size for chickens. So you can see we're, we're doing really good here. You can see we probably got about the same amount of mealworms than we bought. But you can see all these beetles and they'll keep producing for us. So um, <laughs> the thing I've noticed is these mealworms or the beetles will actually start to cannibalize the worms. So that's why I got to change my system here. If I want to produce these things is we got to have a better separation process. So this is what I came up with. <coughs> um, so you can buy these things anywhere. You guys have probably all seen them. And uh, so what I did is I had two old ones and they usually come with five drawers total. So um, but you can take them apart. So I, I just put two into one just so I could have six drawers. So typically you'd have a small one and then a big one that would take up two spaces and then two other small ones. And I thought if I wanted to do this right, I could actually separate the, separate this whole farm into two. So then I'll have three drawers per colony. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this top drawer and then I'm going to cut it out. You, there's a lot of YouTube videos on. If I could tell you the names of the people I've watched do this, I would, but I honestly can't remember. But check out their videos too because it's, it's pretty impressive what they did. But I'm taking their ideas and it looks good here. And then, of course, you need glue guns, knives, sharpies, straight edges. And then this is... Uh, it's called mosquito net aluminum. I chose the aluminum stuff because I thought it'd be more durable over time. So, and that's kind of the mesh size that it shows you there. So it looks perfect. Um, so what I really want to accomplish is the beetles. I want them to not go through. And then all the, the wheat germ and oats, I don't want that to go through. So, but the eggs, oh, I just seen a pupae. There. There's a pupae there. But the eggs are extremely tiny, so they'll go through that mesh and it'll be kind of like a self-sifting system. So, um, yeah, as the uh, beetles lay eggs, they'll go through that mesh, the eggs will, and then that's when the mealworms will start growing. And then <clears throat> those mealworms um, will, will uh, be so small that they'll still fit through the mesh again. So I'm gonna do two mesh systems, two mesh systems. So this one will be mesh, this one will be mesh, and then this one will be solid. And then mesh, mesh, solid. So at the bottom of these, it should be um, the mealworms that I can feed to my chickens, technically. So we'll see if this works. Um, stick around for the ride, guys. And here we go. We're going to get into this. Okay, here. So for the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the drawer, and then I'm just going to kind of cut an inch around, roughly. So I'm just going to 
just going to roughly just measure this over here. Okay, so it's roughly going to look like that. Um, so you can see, I'm just going to leave a little bit on the outside edge, just so that my screen, I have something to glue my screen to. Okay, so I got all four total marked out just like that. <clears throat> so now, I don't know how well this is gonna go, I'm just gonna take a regular utility knife. I got a brand new blade on there. Hopefully that'll score it enough without cracking it. We'll see how it goes. Um, if not, we'll have to bring in the power. Yeah, this is definitely proving to be a little bit difficult and uh, I haven't cracked the wrong side yet, but it cracked on the one side. So, and uh, it works pretty well just putting this on your knee. Just make sure your knee's not underneath it, obviously. But I think I'm gonna be too lazy for this. I'm gonna need to bring out my tip power tools. <clears throat> too much work, eh? Yeah. I don't know. Try from this side, maybe. I think I've just cracked it right there. So I'm back with this multi-tool here. If all you have is a utility knife, you can do it if you got a lot of patience. However, I don't have a lot of patience, so I'm gonna try this bad boy out.
that's a way better tool of choice. Literally in a minute, I got that done. So bye bye utility knife, welcome multi tool. So <clears throat> that being said, if you guys know these things are fairly pricey, but they're a good all around tool for lots of different stuff. So I think I use this on my uh, feeder builder video. So you can check that out. I'm pretty sure I use the same multi-tool to cut out the holes. So they're a very handy all around tool. They're initially pricey, but they'll, they'll uh, pay off in no time at all. So definitely if you want to make a mealworm hotel, this is the right tool to cut out this stuff. It doesn't crack. It doesn't, it just glides right nice and smoothly along there. So <coughs> Okay, I just cut out a, a first square and I just kind of roughly measured it, not with the tape, just marked it out. And uh, so it turns out you can use just regular household scissors if you're using this aluminum mosquito netting. It works pretty good. Um, so I'm gonna attempt this. I did kind of a trial version here before I shot the video and uh, it turns out you can't just nail, screw or glue the corners. It's, it creates a really rough edge. So I'm gonna attempt to just kind of do a string around the outside, kind of like your siliconing and see if that works better. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but the first attempt did not work very good. So we're just gonna make sure we got some fresh ammo here. Okay, here we go. This doesn't set up by the time I'm ready to do this. So it turns out you gotta work pretty fast with this, but I got most of it. I just cut myself a little piece from the extra that I cut out of here, and uh, it worked pretty good. Um, just, you gotta be really quick, cause this cools pretty quickly. So I got most of it, I'll just have to touch up a few things, but apart from that, that worked pretty good. Okay, for this drawer, I'm gonna attempt to just kind of glue one side and then halfway down. So then I can bend the other side up and glue the second part because it seems to dry too quick when you do the whole area. So that's what I'm going to attempt for this one and just kind of see if I can get this side glued down, hold it and then flip it up and do the other side. See if that works better. Again guys, this is all trial and error. Like most of my videos, you just kind of see how things work.
Okay, I was able to set that side no problem. So that was, that works a lot better. So if you're gonna do this, just do half of it and then do the rest after because it's a like perfect amount of time and this one's set a lot better than the last one, so. Okay, so I got uh, all the drawers made. So that'll be where the beetles go in and they'll lay their eggs and they'll fall through the mesh. And then the little worms, they will fall through that mesh and whatever doesn't make it through will stay in here. So that the idea is to have the bigger mealworms in this drawer and then all the growing mealworms in this solid bottom here. So as you can see, you got one section there with a solid and then one section there with a solid. So this is the mealworm hotel and we're gonna have two separate farms going in the same unit. So we'll see how this works. Okay, so I got all, all my drawers filled. You can see all the, the wheat and oats in there. And so now's the tedious part to get all the worms and beetles and baby worms separated. So here we go. So I figured out already that this is a solid bottom. So if you don't want to make a mess of your floor, just put the bottom up first and then these ones because there is some stuff that will fall through the screens. So then you got to pick out the beetles. Here's a beetle. So as you can see, this is going to take forever. Okay, so that literally took way longer than I thought. Um, I was initially just going to separate all the worms sizes and put them in their proper location, but that would have taken me probably, I'm guessing, a full day to do. So I'll show you the final results here. So this is where all the beetles are in this stage here. And they got some nice fresh carrots there. And then so that's going to sift down to this one and then this this should be all the mealworms and uh, there should be from all different sizes and then and then this one is where all the babies should be so and then it just repeats itself we got beetles and then mealworms and then it should size to babies and eggs down there so that's what I ended up doing and uh, hopefully that works. <clears throat> okay, so now that I got all that sorted, um, every little compartment needs a little home. So this is what I use is the egg cartons. And then uh, I just poke little holes in there because they like to climb in and out of those holes. So poke holes all the way around and set them in just like that. And this is the original one I used, and you can see I only poked the holes in the sides, but they've chewed out the tops there too. So they must eat a little bit of paper for fiber, I don't know. I'm still learning about these things, but... So, in every one, I'm just going to put one of these little houses here, so then they got some shelter. And if this is your first time interested about mealworms, their water source is vegetables. So um, I always like to put sweet potatoes or potatoes or celery, anything that's got moisture in it, but not completely wet. Because if you have something that wet, it's just going to mold before they can get to it. So sweet potatoes, potatoes are probably one of the best. Celery is also a very good one. Um, they love all that stuff. And then it'll just uh, keep them alive. And the one thing I've learned 
in this whole process is they go through this stuff a lot quicker than you think. So I started out with just giving them a, a potato kind of like this and didn't really realize that you'd see beetles on it so you'd think it was still good. But I ended up adding a whole bunch of more one time and it just, it seemed like the death rate was going way down. Like I was losing less and less beetles, less and less worms. So I try to, every week, I try to cut up a new potato and put it in there. And they seem to be doing a lot better. But I'm pretty excited about this set setup. I think this is gonna work really, really good. There we go. So now we have our mealworm farm. All moved into their hotel. Now I'm just gonna keep the same kind of container just for the pupae. I'll just set them right on top there. And then um, once they hatch into beetles, just separate them out into the beetle house. So um, if you like this video, make sure you press that like button. And if you first time seeing this channel, please subscribe if you're interested. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and thanks for watching this one. Um, I'll keep you guys updated if, uh, if anything goes wrong or if it works really well, I'll, I'll keep you guys in the loop. I'm kind of excited to see what's going to happen here. And, uh, if it actually works, it's going to work out awesome. Then I won't have to worry about doing all that separating of beagles to get to the worms, etc. They should be separated by size. So that's kind of exciting. I'll see if it works. Um, there is other guys on people on YouTube doing the same kind of method. I don't know if I've seen the double decker, but I, I've definitely seen these totes being used and uh, they seem to swear by it and they seem to say it works really well. So um, I'm just not sure I picked the right size of screen mesh for this stuff, but we'll just see how it works. So thanks for watching guys. We'll catch you on the next one.